What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at a buzzy new app called Media Place. Media Place works for both Windows and Mac and it's basically kind of a media management system for all of your media files on your computer like images, videos, music cuts, and more. But it does some other things too. It's pretty interesting. So today I'm going to show you what it is, what it does, and what I really think about it. This video is not sponsored. Let's just dive right into it. So this is your first look at Media Place. Like I said, Media Place is a media management tool for the files on your computer. So the first step would be to create a new library. And from here, you can drag and drop entire folders or specific clips into your Media Place library. And you can see I've already created several libraries with different types of media. So these ones are all video files. This one's a mix of images and video files as well. And as I select different files in my library, I get different information over here in this pane on the right side of the screen. So when I select this image, I can see the dimensions. I can see the type of file it is which you could do easily if you have a Mac in the Finder or on your PC. But here's what's kind of interesting about the Media Place organizational system. It allows me to rate these images on a five-star scale, so I can add a rating here. And then what I really love is that it pulls out colors from this photo. So if you were going to make a design using this photo, you have all of your CMYK or RGB or hex color codes pulled for you because a lot of times when you're adding text over a photo you want to make the color of the text relate in some way to the photo you're working on so this for me is such a great tool another thing that's cool about this is that you can add custom tags to those images so this one let's say is flowers and now anytime i want to search for anything related to flowers in my library, I can search by those search terms. Now, let me just show you, you can do this in the Finder on your Mac by selecting an image, right-clicking, selecting tags, and adding a tag. Yeah, I can do that, and that will be searchable here in the search bar in the Finder on your Mac. But I have to say that I love that it sort of reminds me to add tags to my images because I never think to do it when I'm working in the Finder on my Mac. So I do think that's pretty cool. And I can add some notes here as well. Now, if you head on over to the Edit tab, there's some basic photo editing tools in here and a few filters that you can apply. You can add text. You can add another image and you can add shapes and customize those shapes. And the other thing that's cool is the compress tab where you can convert this photo into other file types and you can adjust the size of your file and see what the projected file size of that new file will be. So sometimes when you're uploading an image to a website or something, there are file size limits. This way you will be able to predict if the new file you're creating is going to be the right size for whatever your limitation is. And in addition, this slider here, let me like dial down the quality significantly. This slider shows you what the new quality will look like as opposed to the old quality. So you can get a sense of how much quality loss you're going to experience when you compress your file. Let's exit out of here. And I want to show you that if you're working on a video, again, you can rate your file. You can see the main colors here and add tags and notes. But if you head on over to edit, you can do some very basic editing here where you can trim out just a section of the clip and either overwrite the file to be the new length or create a duplicate with your new length. You can also convert it to other formats as well. And you can also export a still frame. Let's move down to the next section, which is free media. You can search for this media. Let's say I wanted to find a dog and then I can choose either an image, a video or a GIF. Oh my gosh, look at this dog. That's hilarious. I'm going to grab a video and if I want to add it to my library, I can just drag it right here into my lifestyle folder. Just that fast, it's imported the media, and now that media is living here in my library. Now, all of this free media from Media Place, I think, is pulled from the Pexels website. So it's not media that you couldn't access 
on your own, but it is nice to have this integration inside the Media Place app. The next option is browser, and I really like this one a lot. I'm gonna navigate to my own website here, and you'll see what it's done. It's pulled all of the images from my website into this pane on the right, and I can save these images from my website right into my library. How cool is that? And you can still navigate in the website in Media Place, just like you would if you were on an internet browser, and just keep reloading the images. I think this is a really cool feature. The next one down is Generate. And what this is, is a set of six dynamic designs that you can actually customize and then save in different file types to use as design elements in your projects. I'm gonna switch back to my Jen's YouTube stuff library and show you the slides tab where you can take images and these images make no sense for what I'm about to show you, but that's okay. And you can create a slideshow out of these images and add text to it as well. And you can also switch up the transitions between your slides. Now, another thing you can do in Media Place is sort of batch modifications to images all in just a couple clicks by creating your own custom presets. I'm going to select this image of this iPad. I'm going to select Actions and navigate down to Your Presets. I have not yet created a preset, so I'm going to make one. And now here, what we can do is add actions, like for instance, converting all of these images to JPEGs, let's say, or resizing all of them, or making adjustments to all of them to the brightness, contrast, and saturation. And so now I can select multiple images, select that new preset I created and hit save here. And now I have duplicate images with those adjustments applied. Now, obviously I didn't do a very good job of creating those adjustments, but I wanted to give you a dramatic look at how you can sort of batch your tasks with Media Place. Now, one other feature of Media Place that I really like, it's its ability to take your video clips and convert them into GIFs because GIFs are something that you can post in a lot of places online that you can't post actual video. For instance, here on YouTube, I often make GIFs from clips from my longer videos to promote my long form content. You've probably seen this a lot on my YouTube channel. And typically my workflow for this is create a animation like this in a square format in Apple Motion. And then I would export this as a video clip before I made it a GIF. Now, Apple Motion does create GIFs, but I find the quality is really low. And so I would use this other GIF creator to convert my video files into GIFs. I can actually do that here in Media Place and the quality on the GIFs is outstanding. I can choose my frames per second or I could resize the video file. I'm gonna hit save new. While we're waiting for this video file to be compressed into a GIF, if you guys wanna check out Media Place for yourselves, I'll link to it down in the description. And now here is my new GIF, and look at the quality of this image. It looks fantastic for comparison. Here is the GIF I would make with that other converter, and you can see that the file size on it is much smaller. So what are my thoughts about Media Place, this totally new way to manage your media on your Mac or PC? I would say I really do love the file structure and how organized everything feels. I love the reminder to assign tags to my media so they're easily searchable. I also really love that it pulls the colors for you out of your images. I think it really helps with your designs. You saw that I loved the browser feature that really made it easy to pull images from websites. And of course, I'm in love with this GIF conversion here for my video clips. In terms of the features I personally probably wouldn't use, I'm not big on these still image slideshows. It's not something I typically need to do. So that's not a feature that I would probably spend a lot of time using. I also think that I probably won't be reaching for these generators too often. There's only six of them. And while you can modify how they look, and make adjustments to them as opposed to let's say in Canva where you can't even change the proportions of the images in Canva. I like that you can fine tune these generators. I just don't think there's enough of them for me to ever really reach for them, but I do have a feeling that there's going to be more content 
in the future under these generators. You know, Media Place, as I'm using it now, is only on version 1.1. That's pretty early on. So I think there's probably going to be some more design elements and capabilities added to this app is going to be my guess. It's definitely giving me a little bit of Canva vibes. I think there's a lot of potential here. So I'm interested to see what else they build out on this app. The other thing that I definitely think could use improvement is that all of these files, everything you're downloading, have to get stored on a piece of hardware on your system, whether that be your internal hard drive or an external hard drive. There is not cloud comp uh, compatibility at this time. Even if you're storing stuff to Dropbox, for instance, it doesn't really connect with Media Place. So I would love to see a cloud component in the future. So overall, I think this is a very interesting app. I know it's super new and that there's going to be more to come. I'm interested, did you guys like what you saw today? I'll link to it down below if you wanna check it out for yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. I picked out some other videos I know you're gonna love and I'll see you again.